Okay, Brother Nathan Bemis with another message from the Word of God, and we're going to have uh, ears to hear tonight. Open your heart, open your ears, and I'm sure God will have something for you. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Amen. Glad to see you. Glad to see you be here. And pray that God gives you a blessing for your heart. Uh, it should be on. Uh, am I on? Yes, tell me. Uh, I got my part on. I don't know if he's got his on or not, but uh, mine's on. Now, uh, you have to tell me. How can you tell? Can you folks tell if it's on or not? It's on? Okay, it's on. Praise the Lord. All right. Now, take your Bible. Turn to the book of Isaiah. Turn to Isaiah chapter 33. And uh, uh, here's my text this evening. I'm going to start out here, but I'm going to go several places. And you need to have a piece of paper tonight. You need to write down some things and write down some verses because you're going to need them. And you're going to need them whether you're young or whether you're old. I like all these young uh, folks sitting here around the front row. I like, to, I like to preach to young folks. And I like to preach to old folks uh, because uh, they need it just as much. Amen? Uh, but you've got your whole life ahead of you. They have their, most of their life behind them. You got most of your life ahead of you. So if I can save you from lots of problems and save you some heartaches, I'll feel good about my message. I'm going to try to save you from some heartaches. That's what I'm going to do tonight. All right. Now uh, take your Bible and turn to Isaiah chapter 33. And uh, let's pick up verse 15. Isaiah 33 and verse 15. He that walketh, uh, worketh righteousness, and speaketh uprightly. He that despises the gain of the oppression, and shaketh his hand from holding a bribe. That stoppeth his ears from hearing blood, and shutteth his eyes from seeing evil. Now I want you to take, and I want you to circle the word, speaketh. Speaketh. That thing right there, speaketh. So that's connected with what? That's with connected with the mouth right here. Then I want you to underline, stoppeth his ears. That's connected with these things right here. And then I want you to look where it says, underline, and shutteth his eyes. Three things. The mouth, the ears, and the eyes. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, I pray tonight that you'd just wash me in your precious blood. I pray you'd cleanse my heart, and Lord, I pray you'd fill me with the Holy Spirit. I pray that you'd use this message. I pray that it would not be forgotten. I pray that it would be remembered for many uh, years to come. And Lord, I pray that it would be helpful to your people, and it will draw them closer to you. In Jesus' precious name I pray, and for his sake, amen. Now, the reason why I want to preach on the ears the mouth and the eyes is for a particular reason, and that is to make you holier, to make you closer to God. If you take your Bible now and turn to Second Peter chapter 3 and pick up verse 11, Second Peter chapter 3, verse 11, write down the cross reference and turn to it and read it, and I'll show you uh, how it's connected with making you holier, making you closer to God and helping you walk better with him. All right, now let's, in Second Peter chapter 3, uh, let's go back and pick up verse 10. I'm going to go to verse 11, but let's pick up verse 10. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall melt with a fervent heat. And the earth also, and the works therein, shall be what, folks? Say, be what? Everybody say it real loud. Burned up. So one of these days, God's going to take everything on this earth, everything in the world, there he is. And, uh, hey, how are you doing there? <laughs> That's Nathan? Gip? Luke Gip. How are you doing, Luke? Good to see you. And, uh, well, I'll just have to say that. <laughs> And it's all going to go up in a ball of flame. Whole world. Amen? Now, come on, folks. God's going to burn this world up and burn everything up. 
and eventually it's going to go up. It's going to go boom. And it's going to explode. The heavens. It said the heavens shall pass away with a great noise. I mean, God's going to take that thing and he's going to make a new heaven and a new earth. But there's going to be a space there before he makes a new heaven and earth. He's going to burn the whole thing up. Now, ain't that something? That my house is going to go up, my car is going to go up, and everything on this face of this earth is going to be burnt to crispines. You with me? How many of you with me? Say amen. I'm preaching this Wednesday night in my church, and a new Christian, he'd just been saved a little while, was sitting back there on the back pew, and he looked at me and says, Preacher, is it all going to be burned up? I said, it's all going to go up in a ball of flame. He had a brand new house and had... Uh, a 1960 white Corvette. <laughs> and he said, Preacher, my house, okay, but not my white Corvette. <laughs> and I never will forget that. Yeah, your white Corvette too. It's all gone up in a ball of light. Say amen. Then he says in verse uh, 11, Seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved, what manner of person ought ye to be? In all holiness and conversation and godliness. So what's he saying? He's saying it's going to go up in a ball of flame. So brother, you know what you want to do? You want to live a holy life and you want to learn something about holiness. And that's what I'm preaching on tonight, holiness. All right. Now, I want you to, it said the mouth, the eyes, and the uh, ears. Three things. Now, some of you older folks will know what I'm talking about. You young folks won't, want, won't miss it. Now, the name of my message tonight, that brother back there is uh, on the tape, and I want you to write down, I want you to write down, where is the three little monkeys? Where is the three little monkeys? Now, you say, what do you mean by that? How many of you older folks, years ago, there used to be in, uh, in pennies and in, in uh, these stores around, there used to be three little monkeys, little statues. And one monkey was going like this. One monkey was going like this. And one monkey was going like this. Now what, now you older folks, what does this monkey right here mean? What does this monkey right here mean? What does this monkey right here mean? See no evil, speak no evil, and hear no evil. And I want to say tonight, where are the sweet little monkeys? You can't find them anymore. They're gone. I went down to this store and looked for the three little monkeys, and it's not there. I went over to this store and looked for the three little monkeys, and it's not there. And I go over to this store and look for the three little monkeys, and they're not there. You can't find the three little monkeys anymore. Now, maybe they exist. I haven't been able to buy one. I want to buy me one of those three little monkeys. What for? To show my heart, mind, and to remind me. I'm going to put one right on my desk right there when I find him. What for? To remind me to watch my eyes. And to remind me to watch my mouth. And to remind me to watch my ears. And I want to say tonight... Where are the three little monkeys? They're missing in America. They're gone. You don't see them anywhere. And so I will preach on those three little monkeys. Now, if you will, take your Bible and uh, turn to some verses. All right, I want you, first of all, I want you to turn to the book. I want to preach on monkey number one. Monkey number one. See no evil. See no evil. That's monkey number one. Now take your Bible and turn to 1 John chapter 2. Turn to 1 John chapter 2. And in 1 John chapter 2, I want you to look at verse 15. Now this is what it says. You with me? Say amen. amen. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all this... Now verse 16. 1 John 2 verse 16. For all this is in the world, the lust of the flesh, that's one, the lust of the what? Eye, that's two, and the pride of life 
is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world passes away, and the lust thereof, but he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. So it says what? There are three basic temptations right there in the verse. The lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye, and the pride of life. There's three basic temptations in all temptations of this world. That If you follow those temptations back, you'll find that the same temptation in Matthew chapter 4. The devil came to Jesus and tempted him with all three basic temptations. All three of them were there. And if you go all the way back into the Garden of Eden where there's uh, Eve standing there before the devil, she's tempted with all three basic temptations. And one of them is what? The lust of of the eyes that's a basic temptation you won't get over it you won't get over that thing you have to watch them eyes you got to watch in America what you look at and the devil's going to tempt you on what you see so you better be careful on what you look at all right now you say what's that uh, we have this thing in America today they call it a computer call it a computer and got a computer board how many you got one I got one I got one. How many got one? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Okay. How many young people have one? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Amen. Now, you better watch that thing, because across that thing, you get on the Internet, and when you get on the Internet, you'll be going on the Internet and going back and forth, and then all of a sudden come across that thing will be a piece of trash and a piece of self that'll go in your eyes that'll set you afire. Now, you listening to me? And you'll say... Well, Daddy don't know what I'm watching, and Mama don't know what I'm watching. So if they don't know, they, I can do what I want to do. Well, let me warn you. Daddy can come in and sit down at the computer and start typing in there. He can find out every site that you is at, and he can find out exactly what you is watching. If he's smart enough. <laughs> he can do it. Say Amen. See, there's somebody who knows computers, and he said, Amen. You better watch that, that there thing that's called a computer that sits there at the desk. And you know what's happening nowadays? People have got to sit in there and that that thing and watching that thing and looking at that thing and looking at that thing and looking at that thing, and all of a sudden trash comes across there, sales comes across there, and that gets down in the heart and gets down in that thing, and it's killing America! And it's killing the Christians! Because they're not watching what they're watching. They're not paying any attention to it. All right. Now take your Bible and let's look a little bit further. Take your Bible. That's the basic temptation. The lust of the eyes. Now take your Bible and turn to Proverbs chapter 27 and look at verse 20. Proverbs chapter 27. I'm going to give you some things that the Bible speaks about that little monkey. Uh, See no evil. So turn to Proverbs chapter 27, Proverbs chapter 27, and pick up verse 20. You need to write it down, turn to it. Proverbs chapter 27, and uh, let's pick up verse uh, 20. And it says, Hell and destruction are never full, so the eyes of man are what? Never satisfied. Never satisfied. Now, you cannot satisfy them eyes. Them eyes will look and look and look and look and look and look, and you can never satisfy them. Now, you see that? Say amen. And it's like this. Uh, you say, well, the sin comes in the eyes. Sin rolls up there like that, and sin rolls up, and it goes right in them eyes. That's where sin enters in. That's how sin begins in the Bible. It begins with a look. It begins with what a man sees. Got to watch them eyes. And you know, in America today, they're just setting everybody up to look at something. Setting everybody up to look at something. And that thing ain't right. That thing's sin. That's destroying American Christians. All right? Now, it's like this. You say, well, preacher, what if I was a blind man? Well, I met a blind man one time. And he was a missionary. And he came to my church. And I said, Brother, I uh, met him. We talked around there a little while. And then we was out in front of the church there. And a young lady came walking up. And the, I seen this guy get a little bit excited, you know, because he heard this girl's voice. 
And he said, he, uh, she talked, they talked back and forth a little bit, and she was over here, and he was over there, and he come up beside me real close like, and said, preacher, preacher, uh, bring me over to her. I want to see what she looks like. I said, see what she looks like? The guy's blind. <laughs> okay, whatever you say. <laughs> I took my arm, and I led him over there like that, you know. <laughs> And uh, he gave her a great big old hug. <laughs> gave her a great big old hug and felt her on this side and felt her on this side. And I thought, that guy's got eye trouble. And he's blind! He's blind! And he's got eye trouble. You know what's wrong with Americans? They have eye trouble. The men have eye trouble. The women have eye trouble. you got to watch what you see. Take your Bible and turn to the book of Psalms. Turn to the book of Psalms. Turn to Psalms 119. Turn to Psalms 119. In Psalms 119, look at verse 37. Verse 37. Now, take your Bible. I'll show you something about them eyes, boy. Them eyes are something else. Them eyes are the beginning of sin. you got to watch what you see. Psalms chapter 119, verse 37 says... Turn away my eyes. Now, look at the prayer. Turn away my eyes from beholding vanity, and quicken thou me in the way. He says, turn away my what? eyes. Like this, he says, help me look somewhere else. Oh, Lord, help me look somewhere else. Oh, Lord, help me look some other way. Don't help me not to look that way, Lord. Help me look another way. And that's what you need to do. All right, now take your Bible and turn to the book of Job. Turn to the book of Job. And turn to Job chapter 31. Job chapter 31. Let's see it again. And these are some verses Christian needs to write down. He needs to meditate upon them. And he needs to put them in his heart. And because he needs to learn something about those there eyes. I got some, you got some. And it's a basic temptation of evil. So you got to watch what you see. You got to watch what you do with them eyes. You got to watch what you look at. Now Psalms, Psalms chapter, uh, I mean Job chapter 31. Are you there? Say amen. All right, Job chapter 31 and verse 7 says, If my steps had turned out of the way, and my heart, take your pen and circle the word heart, right there, heart, walked after my what? Eyes. So what is connected with the heart? What's connected with the heart? The eyes is connected with the heart. Now take your Bible and turn to the book of Lamentations and turn to Lamentations chapter 3. Isaiah, Jeremiah, Lamentations. And turn to Lamentations chapter 3 and look at verse 51. Watch it again. Lamentations chapter 3, verse 51. Now write it down. For my eyes now look at that. What's that third word in the verse, folks? Affectus. Affectus. What does that mean? It, that means, for my eyes affect something. What do your eyes affect? Now watch what they affect. For my eyes affecteth my what? Now everybody say it. Heart. Heart. So what affects my heart? goes right in my eyes, comes up there like that and goes right there in my eyes and goes in my eyes and then goes down there in my heart and it affects my heart. It does something for my heart. It puts something in my heart. It gets something in there. How did it get in my heart? Do you know what destroys a person? What's in his heart? And you say, well, my heart's born again. My heart is saved. I've got a new heart. No, you haven't. You got the same old heart you had when you got saved. You just got to get it cleaned every now and then. Every now and then you got to get your heart washed. There gets bad things get in your heart, rotten things get in your heart, lust get in your heart, and my heart and your heart gets that away. You know how it comes in? Comes right straight up there and goes right straight in them eyes, goes down in them eyes and comes down in there and affects my heart. You say, why is that so important? Because in Proverbs chapter 4, verse 23, he says, Keep thy heart with all diligence, for out of it are what? The issues of life. 
You've got it. You've got it. Out of the heart is the issues of life. Divorce comes from the heart. Desertion comes from the heart. Uh, failure to do your duty comes from the heart. All the issues of life come from the heart. And the heart is affected by what you see. What you see. Let me give you an illustration. Years ago, years ago, my sister, and I'd just been saved a few months, and my sister, I went over to her house, and I was talking to Geraldine, and we was talking up there, and I said, I'm going to go down in the basement. And she said, okay. And I went down in the basement, and I got down in the basement, and over in the corner was a whole bunch of sex magazines, Playboy and penthouse I hope you don't know what that is but some of you I know you know what it is and it was playboy and penthouse and all the rest of them and a big old stack of them out this big and they were wore out and they're down in the toy room in the toy room her three children were messing with those magazines her three children were going through those magazines right and left and her children had wore out those sex magazines I walked back upstairs. I walked back upstairs and I said, Geraldine, if you don't get rid of those magazines that are down in the basement that your children are looking at, they're going to destroy your kids. Now get rid of them dirty magazines. And she said, my husband wants them to be there and so he's going to leave them there and that's up to my husband. That's what we're going to leave them there because that's what he wants them there. She should have put her foot down and says, they're not going to be in this house. You say, my husband will get mad at him. Then let him get mad at you. Because he's wrong and you're right. You say, he'll get mad to no end. You're right and he's wrong. Let him get mad. And then when he gets mad, you say, Lord, you know I'm right. Get him. And the Lord can flat get him. I had a lady come to me and she said, my husband has been watching the sex magazines. This is about 25 years ago in my church. She come to me, you better be careful, your wife will tell on you. <laughs> she came and said, my husband's watching and got the magazines and he's listening to those magazines. He got all those sex magazines and he's reading them. And I went to him and I said, brother, better get rid of those magazines. He said, what magazines? I said, your wife told me. You better get rid of them. She did. I said, yeah, she told me. You better get rid of them. He got mad at her and got mad at me. And am I going to kick him out of the church? No, nope. I'm going to try and help him. Hey, man, I'm going to try to help him. I want to get him to protect those things that are going in his eyes. Five years went by. Another five years went by. Ten years. Next thing I heard was he was out messing around with another woman. Why? All those dirty, rotten things that he was looking at. Come in that eyes, come rolled up and rolled up in his eyes, and he paid no attention to it. Better watch your eyes. Sin begins with a look. Where are the three little monkeys? See no evil, hear no evil, and speak no evil. See, I'm trying to make you holy. I'm trying to draw you close to God and make you a holy Christian. But I can't do it if you don't help me. You going to help me? Then you got to watch what you look at. All right. Take your Bible and turn to the book of Genesis. Genesis chapter 13. Genesis chapter 13. Now in Genesis chapter 13, I want you to show you again. Look at those, uh, look how sin begins. In Genesis chapter 13, now take your Bible and turn to it. Genesis chapter 13, and let's pick up verse uh, 10. Genesis chapter 13, now you know the story. In Genesis 13, Lot and Abraham's had an argument. And Lot and Abraham have a, an argument about the herdsmen that are around and the sheep and the cattle. And Abraham says, Lot, you choose your way, and I'll choose my way. Come into the crossroads of life. Young people, you're going to have to come to the crossroads of life time after time after time after time. It'll come up just like this. One road will go this way. One road will go this way. This road is called right, and this road is called wrong. 
and you're going to hit the crossroads of life time after time after time after time. And where your life goes is when you come up to that crossroads, you got to choose right. Now you listen to me. you got to choose right. Take the road that says it's right. Don't take the road that says it's wrong. Now you hear me? They come to this spot. Abraham and Lot come right up here. Right to that spot. You in Genesis? Now watch it. Genesis chapter 13. And let's pick up verse 10. And verse 10 says, And Lot lifted up his eyes. Now take your pen and underline it right there. And Lot lifted up his what, folks? Eyes. Right there, his eyes. So he does like this. And look. And he saw something. And Lot lifted up his eyes, and behold, all the plains of Jordan, that it was well watered everywhere before the Lord destroyed, destroyed what? Sodom and Gomorrah. Why did he say that? Because Lot is looking toward Sodom and Gomorrah. Uh, even as the garden of the Lord, like in the land of Egypt, as thou comest out of Zoar. And Lot, now watch it, chose him all the plains of Jordan. And Lot journeyed eastward, and they separated themselves one from another. And Abraham dwelt in the land of Canaan, and Lot dwelt in the city of the plains, and did what? Pinched his tent toward what? Sodom. So here's this tent. Here's this tent right here. And does he pitch his tent away from Sodom? So he gets up in the morning, and here's the tent door. He steps out of the tent door, and the tent door looks towards Abraham. No. The tent door ain't looking towards Abraham. He got the tent door over here like that, and he got the tent door facing right straight towards Sodom. So when he gets up in the morning, he gets up in the morning like that and comes out of the tent and he goes, Why, yeah, over there's Sodom. Over there's Sodom. Every day he gets up out of bed and, and looks out that tent, steps out that tent door, and every day he takes a look towards Sodom. A look towards Sodom. A look towards Sodom. Every day, every day. Well, where is Lot going to end up at? You know where he ended up at. He ended up in Sodom, in the gate of Sodom. Why? His eyes led him there. And you know your Bible well enough to know that God rained down fire upon Sodom and burned Sodom and Gomorrah to ashes and left them example to this day how God feels against a queer and a homosexual and a faggot. And Lot got there by looking. By looking. He didn't watch what he saw. He didn't pay attention to what came in his eyes. He took it for granted. Said it doesn't bother me. Doesn't hurt my heart. But it did. Now take your Bible again and turn to the the book of uh, Genesis chapter 20. Genesis chapter 20 and Genesis chapter 20. Look at verse 10. In Genesis chapter 20. Now this is an unsaved man. This man right here is unsaved. He's lost. He doesn't go to glory. He doesn't go to uh, be with the Lord when he dies. Now look at it. Genesis 20 verse 10. And Abimelech. Circle of the fellow's name. Abimelech. Said unto Abraham. Now watch what he says. What sawest thou that thou hast done this thing? Now circle it. What sawest thou? Then Abimelech said, That guy has saw something down here. He saw something down here. Now, he did what he did because he saw something. Now, I wonder what he saw. You know why that guy said that? Because he knows that the sin begins with a look. And he's lost. And he knew something that Christians don't know. Christians don't know that sin begins with a look got to watch them eyes, boy. you got to pay attention to what they see. You say, how, is, how do you figure that? It's just like this. You know what the, girl, the young girls are doing nowadays? They're doing it out there in Montana. And they're doing it, I think, out here too. Young girls are doing this, Luke. They're getting a little short, a little bitty short skirt that's real, real short. And uh, it just barely reaches their belt line. You follow me? Anybody with me? Say amen. Amen. And then uh, they they walk like this around daddy. 
so daddy don't get on their case. And then when they get out and they see some boy watching them, they go like this. So they can see the skin. You got me? Do you understand what I just said? You say, what's going on? They want that somebody to look. Don't get them to look. Don't get them to look. God will take care of you. You trust God. Don't mess with that. You'll create something you don't want. Watch your eyes, people. Watch your eyes. Watch what you look at. I think a woman has, say, has that too. I don't think it's just men. I think it's women too. Look at here. My young son takes off his coat. Then he takes off his shirt. Got his shirt off. I said, put that shirt on. What, Daddy? Put the shirt on. You say, what for? Because it's in the eyes. Women and men. You follow that? Say amen. You follow it. I hope you follow it. Got to watch him eyes. Take your Bible again and turn to the book of Joshua. Turn to the book of Joshua. And turn to Joshua chapter 7. Look at verse 21. Here it is again. Got to watch what it is. You say, how do you figure that, people? How do you figure that, preacher? Well, it's just this simple. We're in an American society now that people are pushing that sex thing to such an extent that it's everywhere and it's bombing and killing everybody on the face of this earth. It happens out there in, in Kalispell. Here's, here's Kalispell right there and here's a sign with a woman in a bikini with a chainsaw. A woman in a bikini with a chainsaw? Can you imagine that? She's out here and she's in pain. she got the chainsaw. <laughs> That's, that's what this world is doing. The world's destroyed by um, the American eye. So what they're trying to do, they ain't trying to sell chainsaws. They're connected to chainsaw with a sex. They're crazy, gun lost their mind. But you see it all over. See it happening all over. You go downtown right here and you look around, you look and you watch, and pretty you see, these people are after my eye and they're not going to get my eyes. I'm not going to give it to him. I refuse to look. So when she walks by, I'm going to go. And she said, that dumb guy, he doesn't know what's going on. <laughs> oh, yes, I do. <laughs> I just didn't give you the pleasure. You wanted me to look, and I'm not going to look. I just went on by him. He said, he's out of it, he's out of it, he's out of it. No, I ain't, sister. I know what you were trying to do. It's because you, you got something wrong with your eyes. You follow what I'm saying? How many follow what I'm saying? Say amen. Amen and amen. I've had people come in my church that didn't have enough clothes on to, I mean, I was embarrassed. I mean, I said, oh, what's that woman doing back there? She ain't got enough clothes on. What in the world is she doing? She's out of her mind. And she's in the church pew. You say, that's where American people are? Absolutely. You say, that takes boldness. It takes being crazy. And they're there, sitting right there, and no shame. No shame. Did not blush. I was blushing all over the place. I said, no, I'm not going to look I mean, this is crazy. It's out of her mind. Well, take her away and don't bring her back till she's got some clothes on. Say amen. You betcha. All right. Joshua chapter 7, verse 21. Joshua chapter 7, verse 21. And look what it says. This is how sin starts. When I saw among the spoils of the godly, uh, spoils of the goodly Babylonian garments, and 200 shekels of silver, and the wages of gold, 50 shekels weight. Then I coveted. Now underline the first three words. When I what? Saw. Circle it right there in Joshua chapter 7, verse 21. 
when I... Now get your Bible. Turn to the verse, folks. This might be a difference of life and death for you. When I saw... Saw. Right there. Saw. Now underline. Then I what? Coveted. Then I coveted. And I what? Took. Took. But where did it start? Where did the sin begin? It began with a look. No man, I want you to get your pen. I want you to get your pen. I want you to write down your Bible right where you're at. I want you to write down in the Bible right here. A man is no better than the pictures he enjoys looking at. That's what Dr. Ruckman said when I was down there at the at the school and he taught me. He said, a man is no better than the pictures he enjoys looking at. And I thought to myself, Oh God, I want to be better. And if I'm not any better than the pictures I'm looking at, I am no good. So I changed some things in my heart and mind and so forth. I said, God, I ain't going to look at those things. I ain't going to be caught looking at those things. I'm going to change what I look at. A man is no better than what the pictures he enjoys looking at. Dr. Peter S. Ruckman said that. I believe he's 100% right. Will you say amen about what he said? I'll say amen. <laughs> I believe he was telling the truth. Take your Bible and turn to 2 Peter chapter 2, verse 14. 2 Peter chapter 2, verse 14. Now watch it again. Here it is. 2 Peter chapter 2, verse 14 says, Now how many are there? Say amen. All right. 2 Peter chapter 2, verse 14 says what? Having, having... Eyes, there's the eyes, having eyes full of what? Adultery. Having eyes full of adultery. So what's happening? He's going down the street corner. He's going down there on the street corner. And he's looking on the street corner. And he's looking and looking and looking on the street corner. And he's filling his eyes just plumb full of something. He's filling his eyes full of adultery. You see that? Now, it's a strange thing. I believe it's so. That's what's happening to American people. They're destroying themselves by what they look at. You start looking at that book and start looking at that book and start looking at that book and you'll see some things take place. That's monkey number one. Now, take your Bible and turn to the book of Matthew and let's look at monkey number two. That's see no evil. And monkey number two is what? Speak no evil. Speak no evil. Now look at it. Matthew chapter 12, verse 34. Matthew chapter 12, verse 34. The three little monkeys. Matthew chapter 12. And look at verse 34. Verse 34 says, O generation of vipers, how can ye be evil? Now watch it. Speak good things. For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth, what? Speaketh. A good man out of the good treasure of his heart bringeth forth good things. And an evil man out of the evil treasure of his heart bringeth forth evil things. You know, when I first got saved, I got saved and I'd been a Christian two weeks. Been, been saved two weeks. And uh, I was sitting beside a, a bunk in the Navy. And, and the bunks like this, you fold the bunks up so you can't see past them when in the daytime. And I was sitting on one side of the bunk and had my Bible there, and I was trying to read it. I'd go and flippity flop, boom, floppers, flippity flop through the Bible. I couldn't read it. And I was sitting there with that Gideon New Testament. And uh, I heard the first class and another seaman on the other side. And I heard them say something. And what he said was this He said, uh, the first class said to the seaman, he says, That Nathan Bemis, uh, I want to know if he's a Christian. And the seaman said, he said, don't worry about it, he's not. And I went, <laughs> I thought I was. <laughs> and I kept on listening. They didn't know I was there. I was about ten feet away from them. And that first class says, he's not. And the seaman said, no, he's not. And the first class said, how you know he's not? He said, I heard him cuss up a storm yesterday. I know he's no Christian. And when that guy said that, that thing went all the way down to my heart, right down to the bottom of my heart. And God, I said, 
He's right. I cuss like a sailor. Well, I was a sailor. But <laughs> I cuss like a sailor. And Lord, I got a tremendous problem of cussing. Because I was dumb and stupid and I cussed all my life to the time I was 19 years old. I didn't want anybody to know how dumb I was. So I cussed like a sailor cussed since I was a little boy. I mean, I could turn a wall red with cussing. I knew every cuss word there ever was. I knew them by heart. I could roll out nothing but cuss words. And then I said, oh God, oh God, if you don't take all those things out of my heart, I'm going to keep right on cussing like a sailor. Oh God, he thinks I'm not a Christian because I cuss. God, will you take those things out of my heart? I didn't know one verse in the Bible. I didn't know John 3, 6. I didn't know nothing. I said, God, take it out. Do you know what he did right there on the spot, right there that very minute and very second? He took every cuss word I ever had in my heart and cleansed them all out. And he said, you won't cuss again. And I got up and I never cussed again. And two weeks later, a guy come by and says, Man, what happened to you? I said, well, I don't know. <laughs> I must have become a Christian. <laughs> but God took that filthy, dirty mouth, because it was, where was it at? It was in my heart. Several years went by. In fact, 10, 20, 30 years went by. 30, more than that, about 35 years went by. And one day, I was walking in the door of the jailhouse and I walked in the door of the jailhouse and had Sean Scribner with me and we were going to preach at the jail and there was a jailer there and Sean said hi and called him his name and that jailer says I never give you permission to call me by my name you don't have that permission and I thought to myself why you dirty rotten and that word rolled right up out of my heart and rolled right up to the, my lips right there and was right to the tip of my tongue and I was just about ready to say that word. And I closed my mouth and, and bit my lip and went, don't say that, you'll be in trouble if you say that. You say it, but it was in your heart. You didn't say it, but it was in your heart. And I said, God, you're right, you're right. I got that dirty, rotten thing back in there again. I don't know how it got it in. Oh, Jesus, please wash that thing out of my heart so I won't say it. You got to watch it. The three little monkeys. Where are the three little monkeys gone? See no evil. Speak no evil. You know what's wrong with a lot of Christians today? They say, I, he said, my husband, he cusses. I said, he does? He says, yeah. I said, well, I've never heard him cuss. He says, yeah, but you've never seen him hit his hand with a hammer. So when he comes to church, I say this. Now, brother, what you got to do is when you hit your hand with a hammer, you got to go, <laughs> but don't you cut. And he goes home. And his wife says, you ought to heard him yell in the garage. Wow, he yelled. But he didn't cuss, preacher. How about you? Have you ever heard a Christian take the name of Jesus and say, blankety blank, 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 with the name, the greatest name on the face of this earth, the greatest name in all eternity, and take the name of Jesus, and he's a Christian, and take it in vain? What does it do to you? Cut you all the way down to the heart. Now, come on. Doesn't it cut you to the heart? How many of you have heard that and it cuts you to the heart? Say amen. Then if you're a Christian and you take the name of Jesus Christ in vain, you had flat better stop. You better watch your mouth. You better clean out your heart and say, Oh God, I've been taking the name of Jesus in vain. You know what I call it? I call it Christian cussing. <laughs> we say, what's Christian cussing? They go like this. What's the word D? D's for what? Damn. 
These were damned, don't you? How many know these were damned? Say amen. These were damned. So they say, darn. That's Christian custom. We know what darn was. We know darn was damned. Shut your mouth. You got it? Comes along and says, what's the G for? The G is for God. Don't you know what G is for? G is for God. They come along and say, gosh. We know what it's for. We know it. And if you don't believe me, get an unsaved man right here. And an unsaved man will swing around and say, I heard you cuss. He's got it just like that, boy. He'll say, I heard you cuss. If you don't believe me, just try it on some unsaved man and then see how he responds to it. And he'll spin right around and say, you, I heard you use God's name in vain. And you'll, you'll try to defend yourself and say, no, I said, God, I said, God, I said, God, I said, God. You can't talk your way around him. He'll know what you said. Call Christian cussing. See, you can't have words that start with D. You can't have words that start with G. You can't have words that start with, you know what I mean? Jelly bean, <laughs> like Ruckman said, you got to get rid of those words. Get you a word that don't sound like a cuss word whatsoever. Find you one that don't have any indication whatsoever to any kind of cuss word if you got to say something. I'd like to hear you say, Glory to God! <laughs> I hit my hand. They say, you're crazy. Yes, but it beats cussing. <laughs> Three little monkeys. See no evil. Speak no evil. And hear no evil. Take your Bible and turn to 2 Timothy chapter 4. 2 Timothy chapter 4. And in 2 Timothy chapter 4, uh, look at verse 3. Oh, where are the three little monkeys in America? 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 3. Now, if you're there, I trust God you are. In 2 Timothy chapter 4, I want you to get that last of the three little monkeys. 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 3. For the time will come when they shall not endure sound doctrine. Folks, look at that. Take a pen and underline it. They will not endure sound doctrine. Does your pastor preach sound doctrine? Say amen. Then what do you got to do? You got to endure it. You say, endure it? Yeah, endure it. There are some things in that Bible that will just twist you around this way and then twist you around this way and twist you around this way and twist you around this way and you'll go, ah, 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 ah. and it'll nail your hide. You got to endure sound doctrine. The next time you get mad at the preacher, you say, yes, but he preached the Word of God. Yes, but he preached the Word of God, and I'm going to endure sound doctrine. Did he preach the book? Okay, then you've got to endure sound doctrine. Now, that's what in the last time, folks are not going to do that. They're not going to do that. Don't you be one of them. It says, in 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 3, In time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lust shall heap to themselves teachers having what kind of ears? What kind of ears? Itching ears. Itching ears. You say, what are itching ears like that? <laughs> not that I'm itching my ears like that. It's not that kind of thing. It's itching ears like this. Tell me something about myself that will make me feel good. Preacher, tell me something about myself and make me feel good. Now, I'll tell you what makes you feel good. Teaching makes you feel good. Preaching makes you feel bad. Teaching, 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 you teach the Bible and you say, Oh, man, I love teaching. I like teaching. Teaching makes me feel good. I like that. Teach me, preacher, teach me. But I don't want you to preach at me. That preaching tells me. That preaching upsets me. That preaching bothers me. The teaching touches your head. The preaching touches your heart. Your head's not going to bother or do any good for you. It's your heart that's going to drive you. It's your heart that's going to make you a difference. It's heart that's going to lead you and direct you. 
out of the abundance of the heart are the issues of life. So you know what you need? You need teaching. Don't get me wrong. You need teaching. You need to talk the Word of God. But you also need some good old-fashioned preaching that'll just tear your hide. Watch them eyes. Watch that mouth. And watch them ears. Make sure that you don't have itching ears. Keep right on going, and when those ears don't itch anymore, and you say, man, that's rough. Get up and walk out the door and say, it's rough, but it's right. It's God's book. Okay, God. Watch your ears. Every eye closed and every head bowed. Oh, where are the three little monkeys? They're missing in America. They're gone. They used to be found all over they're not anywhere anymore. Question, have you been watching your eyes? Have you been watching your mouth? Have you been watching your ears? Now, you say, preacher, I haven't been paying attention to what I say. Start paying attention to what you say. Start paying attention to it. Start paying attention to what you look at. Now, Job said, I have made a covenant with my eyes. Why then should I think upon the man? That's what Job said. I made a covenant with my eyes. Why then should I think upon the man? I'm telling you how to get the victory. You need to make a covenant with your eyes and say, Lord, I'm going to stop looking at that. It is doing me no good. There's nothing in it that's helping me, and I'm going to stop it. But nobody can do that but you. Maybe you said, Preacher, I'm going to stop what I've been saying. I've been saying some things that just are not good. And you got to say, Lord, cleanse my heart. It's because it's in my heart. Cleanse my heart. Lord, help me to watch what I say. Endure those ears tonight. Every eye closed and every head bowed. Maybe there's a Christian here tonight. So, preacher, I know your message is hard, but I know you're right. And I need your message, and I want to do something about it. I want to be like the three little monkeys, see no evil, speak no evil, and hear no evil. And by the grace of God, I want to do that. Will you pray for me? Will you raise your hand? Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you for your honesty. Now, I don't know if it's your ears, I don't know if it's your eyes, I don't know if it's your tongue. I don't know. But you have to start watching everything. Every idle word that men shall speak, they shall give an account, therefore, in the day of judgment. You have to give an account for what you say. Dear Lord Jesus, I pray by your grace and by your mercy that your people will lay it to heart, Father, like I said in the book of Malachi, that they laid it to heart. Lord, I pray that you would help them to lay it to heart tonight. In Jesus' name I pray, and for his sake, Amen. Let's all stand. Let's all stand. Take your hymnal and turn the page. 392 in your hymnal. The night is a fountain filled with blood Flowing from Emmanuel's bed And sinners plunge beneath that blood Lose all their guilty stains Lose all their guilty Lose all their guilty stains And sinners plunge beneath that blood Lose all their guilty stains You said, preacher, lose all of them? Lose all of them. Lose all of them. You plunge beneath that blood And you'll lose all of them. You say, preacher, all of them? All of them. He won't miss a one. He'll cleanse them from the top of your head to the bottom of your toe. He'll cleanse your mouth. He'll cleanse your eyes. And he'll cleanse your ears. You wash it in the blood of Jesus Christ tonight. And I guarantee you the blood of Jesus Christ will cleanse you from all your sins. God spoke to your heart. You come. Wash all my sins away Wash all my sins away Wash all my sins away
wash all my sins away, and then may I, though vile as he, wash all my sins away. Now, Christian, you got to go out there, and if you can find that three little monkeys, I want you to send me one. But I want you to keep buy more than one. I want you to buy one for yourself and buy one for me. And I hope I at least get one. <laughs> at least one. You say, what for? So I can set that right on my desk. Set that right on my desk. You say, what for? I want to be reminded. You say, preacher, you need to be reminded of it. Yeah, just like you. I'm a sinner like you. You don't think I'm a sinner? I'm a sinner like you. And I want to be reminded constantly of those three little monkeys. Hear no evil, see no evil, and speak no evil.